Hello HP Touchpad users, great news. Today I want to tell you about Android 7.1 Nougat builds on the HP Touchpad. That's right, here you can read about it in the XDA Developers Forum. Thanks to the Evervolve team, namely Flintman. Thank you very much for your incredible work. He's brought Android every version pretty much to the HP Touchpad and he just keeps going. And he's even got 4G support. You gotta give the guy some credit. He is an incredible developer and big thanks to him. Note these builds are still considered alpha and might not be ready to be your daily driver just yet. There's still gonna be bugs and issues for certain applications. So report any issues in the forum here. However, they've steadily improved. The information on this page is a little out of date as we've moved up to Nougat 7.1, but we're using the 3.4 kernel and performance is quite good. I'm gonna compare and contrast that to Android 4.4 later on on my HP touchpad and take you on a tour. For now, let me tell you that the camera is sort of working. It's just totally inverted, but it's still good. It's still good. The Wi-Fi has also improved in 7.1. I haven't had it really cutting out on me. And the Bluetooth functions quite well. I'll show you that as well. All this applies to the 4G model. Down below, we have some important links. As I mentioned, the information on this page is out of date, so you don't want to get the ROMs here. You want to click on the Evervolve website here. Important note, in the upper left-hand corner, select Devices. At the bottom, there's Tenderloin for the regular HP Touchpad Wi-Fi and Tenderloin 4G for the Touchpad 4G. Here's your ROM links. Just click on the correct link for you. Here is the latest nightly builds. You simply click that and then go download. Now you'll need the ROM, you'll need a GApps, and the special recovery to get this installed. We're gonna go over the install stuff in a minute. Back to the main page. So you'll wanna follow that link there. Go to the Evervolve website to get your ROMs. Everything will be in this video's description. Now an important note, you will need a larger system partition. Now this is the place where Android gets installed. Every time we get a newer version of Android, it needs more space, it gets bigger. Same with the GApps packages. As mentioned, these links to the ROMs are actually for the older version and you should get the 7.1 versions I mentioned above. Going down, there's some more information about changing the file system. I'm not gonna be doing this step, but it's something to note. Also, you'll want to clean install this ROM. Dirty flashing could cause you issues, and we're going to go over that as well. Now we're going to talk about installing this on your HP touchpad. That's sort of the tricky part. Now I've got a full guide coming out in the next couple of days, so go hit that like button to support me, and I'll show you step by step how to do that. For now, go check out post number three, and big thanks to Always Lucky for this excellent post with all the links you're going to need. Now what we're going to need to do to get this installed is fresh install Android on the HP Touchpad with the Touchpad Toolbox. Now we will need to do a complete data reset because we're going to be changing the partitions here. We're going to install Android and we're going to use the above three files he's got listed here for an older version of Android. Now here's the trick. We need to change the system partition. After we've chosen to install Android and selected our ROMs, we can then modify the partitions before going ahead. Now this step can be a little tricky. We'll need to actually do this on the tablet and what we need to do is subtract data from the data partition and move it over to the system partition. Now I'm gonna show that in my step-by-step -step guide, but that's kind of how you do it. It's much like using Taylor in WebOS. Once you've changed the partitions, you just finish the install and let it complete. Then you need to transfer over the files to get Android 7.1 installed. You'll need the twerp file linked here. You'll need the ROM file mentioned earlier in the Evervolve links. And finally, you'll need the open GApps package. Click the link here. And what we need is the 7.1 GApps and we're recommended to get the Pico, which is very small. There's different sizes here and that'll download. So we'll need the open G apps. We're gonna need the ROM over here that I mentioned earlier from the Evervolve site. And we'll need the recovery. Once we have all three files, we're gonna need to transfer that over to the HP touchpad and then reboot again into recovery. From recovery, we'll need to flash the new twerp. Then we'll need to reboot the tablet and again enter recovery. Now, we want to wipe the system partition from the advanced menu and we just want to do the system partition and then we'll be ready to install the ROM and the GApps package. Once you've got that installed you'll reboot 
and be patient because it takes a really long time to boot that first time, you'll be ready to use this. I know it's a little complicated, don't worry, I've got the full guide coming. Please like and subscribe to see all that. Now it's time to take you on a tour and show you the ROM in action. Here I am running Android 7.1 on my HP Touchpad. Always evolve, ever evolve. Check it out, it's running quite smoothly. We'll get to some performance benchmarks and I'm actually using a Bluetooth mouse right now. You can check that out. Now swipe down and go to the little gear symbol at the top. This will get to our settings. All the way at the bottom, we'll go to about tablet. And here you can see I'm running Android 7.1 with the 3.4 kernel. Here's your delicious nougat. It doesn't really have much interaction, but there you go. It's running nougat, there's the proof. And big thanks to Flintman of the Evervolve team. It's running great. Now we're gonna go back to the settings menu and check out the Evervolve tab. There's two additional tabs that are very helpful. Here we have the toolbox and the updater. First off, we're gonna check out the toolbox. Here we have multiple tabs along the left hand side. First go to the super user. If you wanna enable super user permissions, you'll need to go here. It's disabled by default. Go to the first little thing you can click and enable it. All you need to do is select it and now it's enabled. Then go back to the tab on the left and check out the performance menu. Now the performance menu will allow you to overclock the tablet if you want. For all my tests and everything in this video, I was just using stock, but you just do it like that. You just click it, select it, and forget it. Great design. Thank you, Evervolve team. And there's also a bug reporting menu if you have crashing with apps, if the tablet crashes repeatedly, any anything goes wrong, click a bunch of these, click them all in fact, fetch the logs, and then post the results over on the XDA forum so Flint Man can take a look. This is how we get things fixed. There's a few other tabs, but nothing important. You can go through them and have a look yourself. Next up, we want to check out the updater. Here we can automatically get the latest updates for our Evervolve ROM. Here you can see the ROMs listed. You can simply select it by clicking on it and downloading it. I already have the latest ROM installed, although it's in a different folder. Along the top, you can see there's additional tabs for testing and gapps packages. Now I'm just gonna show you that Bluetooth is working. You can see I'm already using my mouse and it's connected, everything's been great so far. I hear audio works fine as well. Next, I'm gonna hit the little tab here that shows all the little windows I have open at once. You can simply swipe them away and this clears up the memory. And this is how it looks in Android 7.1. It's pretty spiffy, runs pretty smooth. And let's just show you a little performance now. Here you can see my N22 benchmark score, but let's compare that right now with KitKat. So on the left we have Nougat 7.1, on the right we have KitKat 4.4.4. You can see we're getting a nice 17,000 point score already in Nougat, and it's already doing quite a bit better than KitKat, but there is some room for improvement as we have a lower 3D score, so there is some optimizations that are going to happen. But all in all, it's looking great for performance so far. Next, we're going to take a look at the battery health, because that's always a big concern, especially with a new ROM. So here we have it in the 3C Battery Monitor widget app. And again, let's do a comparison between KitKat and Nougat. On the left, we have Nougat 7.1. On the right, we have KitKat 4.4. Here you can see the tablets at the same time on the same day, sleeping overnight and there's quite the comparison. You can see KitKat still has a lower deep sleep score, but Nougat's quite consistent. It's got around minus 22 fairly consistently, and the KitKat's going from about minus five to minus 10 on average, and there's a little bit of spiking. So all in all, you can see the performance with the deep sleep battery test is pretty good in both cases, and Nougat will only improve with time because with all the newer ROMs, the battery life and drain is a little higher at first. Eventually, it'll get over to where it is at KitKat's level. Now let me just switch over to the YouTube app and show you my latest video because the app is running just fine with the audio. Hello HP Touchpad users, great news. There you have it. Next up, let's check out that camera. Now sometimes the camera crashes, just relaunch the app and it'll be fine. Well, sort of fine. It's inverted, but it's a work in progress. It's kind of working. Let me flick on the light. Hey, how you doing? There I am in the shot, briefly upside down. So you can see it's actually working, but I'm sure support will improve with time. It's always a big hurdle for the developers. 
Let's have a look at the Play Store. There is full functionality. It loaded it up just fine for me. Didn't seem slow or anything. Eh, it seemed fine. I installed a couple apps. Try it out for yourself and let us know what does or doesn't work. Now we're going to try our web browser. This is always an important test because it's pretty resource intensive just surfing the net. I'm using the Dolphin browser and here we can see the XDA form is running fine. Fine as long as we have one tab. If we open multiple tabs at a time, it really hurts the system performance. And yeah, we want to avoid that. Try to keep only one or two tabs open, I'd say. Now we're just going to open up Quick System Info Pro, and what this is going to show us is the various partitions. You can see I've divided up the storage. The system storage, mine is actually at 1.75 gigabytes. Now this is to good buffer space, I gave it a little extra space, I'll talk about that in my full install video, you'll see that next. Now you'll see secondary storage, now that's the space for WebOS and the TT install file, so that's an extra partition. And then your main data storage, where we've subtracted data from that to add to the system storage. Now if we swipe down from the upper left hand corner, this app has a little resource monitor. So we can see with all the web browsing tabs open, we've actually really kind of used up all the resources. So every once in a while, you're going to want to go through and just kind of clean out the extra tabs. It'll really keep the performance running more smoothly. You can also reboot once in a while too, if that works for you. Finally, I'll end this on a little Clash of Clans footage. Please subscribe to see the latest updates with the HP Touchpad. Thanks for watching, everybody, and thanks for the continued support and development, Flintman and everybody over at XDA. Just incredible to see this older tablet from 2011 still going strong with the latest versions of Android. Big thanks, everybody. See you in the next one.